Okay, Rick, uh, good to see you, man. I thought we'd just jump right into it, man. Every time I see your smile, I just think of love and I just think of kindness. So uh, what I thought about, oh. man, was uh, a comment that you made to Brian and I uh, on our hike. And it had to do with uh, something that we were doing, that we were just doing the hike, but it's something that you noticed. And it informed today's title, which was going to be uh, Loving Kindness is like saying hello to yourself. So can you tell oh. the story of what happened? So we're, we were on a hike, uh, you, Brian, and I, and uh, it was a crowded day. It was a beautiful day in Sedona, so the crowd was out in force. A lot of folks from Phoenix and California and, you know, the usual places. Washington, for some reason, uh, has a lot of visitors here. But anyway, we're on the path. And normally when I'm hiking, I have my eyes down and I'm, you know, I'm beating cheeks. I'm heading up the road and I'm doing, uh, you know, something to work on my cardio. So if I pass somebody, sometimes I'll say hello, sometimes I don't, but it's not an important thing to me. Well, what surprised me and what I thought was really cool was how you and Brian both said hello to each and every person, asked them how they were doing and had a little conversation with them. And I was so surprised because the people were so responsive. You know, you're out in the air, it's clean, it's healthy, people feel great. And, you know, you'll say, hey, how you doing? You know, oh boy, that was a, it was a, t a tough shoulder over there we crossed. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was it. Where's this path go? And you had a little conversation. And these were people who you guys didn't know from Adam. And I watched that. And that was really heartwarming for me. And I thought, boy, you know, what a curmudgeon I've become. How, how um, closed off I've become by avoiding that. And here's the little nuggets of joy along the way that you and Brian were experiencing that I wasn't. So I was a little envious of that. And um, since that time, I've done have done the brian and keith on the trail rule and it's been really terrific um you know it's it's the kind of feeling that you get when you're not alone or when you're let's say in a crowd when you're rooting for a sport event and you have everybody kind of on the same um, page as you cheering for the same thing it's that feeling like you're in it together and all you're in it together on really when you're on the path is life and nature and it was just a beautiful experience and i I really appreciate uh, having had that, and I'm so grateful I saw that and changed my behavior accordingly. And Rick, thank you so much, man, for the compliment. Uh, I think I stated a few years ago that uh, I really wanted kindness to be like breathing for me. And so I've made it a diligent, uh, I've been diligent in my effort to greet people and say, how are you doing and be present uh, for a conversation. And, uh, and after a lot of practice, it's like breathing for me now to just be kind. And so uh, Tim and I have this say, saying that we say that kindness is free, it's free. So why not <laughs> just give it out and pass it out like candy to everybody, you know? And so uh, we do that. And what's really been good about my practice is I'll be at Mayo Clinic, which is a very friendly, friendly place, but people are like in their own world. They're going to a meeting, they're going somewhere. And I often say hi to a lot of people and some people don't, don't say hi back. And, and, and the old me would be, would feel slighted that someone didn't acknowledge me or whatever, but that's not my journey. That's not my path. My path is just to be kind. And so when people say hello back, great. If they don't, that's great too. And I just really love the way it makes, it, it, it makes others feel if they're open to it. Uh, I love the way it makes me feel when they say it back. And if they don't, I like the way that feels too. You know, like I said with the title, you know, loving kindness is like saying hello to yourself. And so, and I like saying hello to me, you know, to, to my conscious self. So I just thought, you know, a little short podcast about what you shared with Brian and I might be a, a good start, in, you know, to the day that there is something that we can do every day to contribute to the spaces that we move in and out of and the people that we interact with. So I'll just finish with that, Rick, if you want to end this little short podcast, but again, kindness is free. You know, I, I do, I, I don't want to end the podcast yet because I still want to learn more about it. So for you and Brian, um, I don't want you to speak for Brian, but can you tell me some of the more interesting things that have happened to you when you've talked to strangers? Can you give me a couple of examples of something maybe 
where you've gotten a payoff um, or you found out a fact or you learned something about yourself or life just from being kind? Yeah, you know, what it is is uh, kindness just cuts through biases that we all just naturally have and fears and things like that. And it's really just cut through that. Um, the other thing too is that um, I, it, it's, it's, it's helped me connect with people's humanity quickly, like yeah. really, really fast. Like no matter, like I may see a bumper sticker or, or, or something like that uh, after we part ways, I see someone get into a car after we say hello. And, I'm, and it may be of a different political affiliation or something like that than I had. And had I seen the bumper sticker first, you know, I may have like not been so quick to roll up with kindness, but because I didn't, I'm like automatically kind right off the bat. Like it cuts through all the biases and all the prejudices and things like that. So that's probably like one of the best things is, is, is that it knocks down walls that, that really stand between our humanity with each other. Um, but I've been on planes. I just, one of the payoffs is just seeing people smile, like their whole facial expression and their whole like aura just shift and change. Like that's been like an amazing gift of, of just being kind. And, um, and I can just, I can just, um, the number of people that have been kind to me over the years that I've been totally not present mm -hmm. and in my head ruminating or, or trying to get to the next moment uh, when there's only this moment, uh, the people that have been patient with me along the way and been like, man, that kid is like, he's somewhere else. It's cool. You know, I'm, my path is to be kind. So just that compassion and the gratitude and appreciation for other people, that's probably the biggest payoff in the connection with everyone's humanity. That's, that's been an exceptional payoff on it. But I knew that I wanted that feeling and so like I, I've told people before, I started working on being a person who is, who is on the causal end of creating that for myself and for others by approaching being kind like breathing. Like there's never a situation to where I've been in to where kindness wasn't uh, the, the, you know, the right thing to do, the, the, the best thing to do. So I used to be a person that needed a reason to be kind or to be compassionate or to be yeah. uh, understanding. Like if I'm walking through a crowded place and somebody is not paying attention and they bump my shoulder. And my first thing is to be like, how dare you like run into me or cut me off in traffic. And then mm -hmm. once I found out like they have a loved one who's distressed and they're running to get there or driving really fast to get home to, 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 to care from someone, then I kind of give them a pass. Oh, okay, okay, that excuses their behavior. Man, I feel bad about, you know, not, uh, I'm not giving that person the benefit of the doubt. But what I found is by practicing kindness uh, with the kind of uh, manner and commitment that I have, that I no longer need a reason to, to, to be compassionate, or to be uh, empathetic or to be loving. I don't need a reason. I just, I'm being kind because I'm being kind. I'm being loving and compassionate because I'm being loving and compassionate. Like, I don't need to know where you align politically, where you're from, if we're from the home, same hometown, if we root for the same sporting team. I don't need to know how you stand on this issue or that issue. I'd rather not know. I just want to be kind, just to be kind. So it's, it's just been this incredible opening for me, Rick. You know what I think? I remember Wayne Dyer used to say something. I, I can't remember which of the programs, but it was so true. And that was something along the lines of what happens when you squeeze an orange? What comes out? And the oh, yeah, I know the story. Orange, yeah. The orange juice comes out. That's what's inside. So when you're when you're talking, you're always reminded of that story because it's just like when you're compassionate, it just reveals and kind. It just reveals what's inside of you, kindness and compassion. And that's such a uh, a fulfilling and lighthearted way to w walk through life when you feel kind toward others. And as we started the show, therefore kind to yourself. That's kind of the feedback. It's a loop. And, you know, that's what's inside of you is the kindness. After a while, it just becomes automatic. And I also feel when I've tried this now just for a couple of uh, weeks since you guys have left, 
you know, it's, it just feels like I'm part of a, like the team humanity. I don't know what yes. that is, but their yeah. connection that, that, ma <laughs> that makes me less isolated. And that ties into, you know, some of the things that we're, we learn about um, emotional and psychological health, that humans depend on networking. And I think when you feel like you're part of a network, even if it's a network of strangers, I would say, especially a network of strangers, that there's this feeling like you're all in it together. And it's a really beautiful thing. And I, I really thank you and Brian for showing me that. I, I would have kept my head down and, and minded my own business and missed out on a lot of beautiful experiences. You know, thank you, Rick. And, uh, you know, that's what's amazing about our friendship. You know, the circle of friends that we have is that we are constantly inspiring each other uh, every single time that we're together. And uh, that's just such a beautiful thing, you know, and we just help each other grow. Like none of us have it figured out and we're just trying to be our best and be conscious and, and contribute. And we're also so very open and we acknowledge each other for those, those kinds of examples that we provide about, you know, to be on the path. You know, for those who don't know the Wayne Dyer story, I'll share it very, very briefly so they can kind of catch up of what you were talking about. So uh, Wayne Dyer, who is a person that Rick and I, Rick introduced me to him um, and his teachings and uh, just, just his, the way that he lived his life. Uh, he's a famous, famous, famous person who is really on, who lived in an enlightened journey, uh, especially the last 40 years of his life. So Wayne Dyer tells a story about how his daughter came home uh, from school and she got in trouble with a teacher. A, a classmate said something and she got in trouble and Wayne Dyer asked like, you know, so what, how did you handle it? What happened? And she went on to kind of defend and explain her reaction to the other classmate. And Wayne Dyer said, you know, let me, let's, let's have a conversation about this a little bit further. And he goes, you know, you, you know what's when you squeeze an orange, what comes out of it, right? And she's like, yeah, silly, orange juice. That's what comes out of the orange when you squeeze it. Okay, so when you squeeze an orange, apple juice won't come out of it? Nope, no apple juice, only orange juice. What about pineapple juice? Nope, only orange juice. Grape juice? No, so they go through. So Wayne Dyer goes through all these fruits and, he, and she keeps coming back and saying, no, only orange juice will come out of an orange. And then Wayne Dyer finishes with, when someone squeezes you or life squeezes you, what comes out of you? And so for me, what used to come out of it was defensiveness, ego, I gotta be right, I'm superior, you're wrong, uh, I'm feeling slighted, all of that stuff. Now, what my practice is, is when I'm squeezed by life or my ego tells me I'm squeezed by other people, what comes out of me is kindness. That's what, that's, that's my path. So, uh, man, Rick, thank you for the compliment, man. I love you so much. Uh, and I can't say enough about how grateful I am that you're in my life. Oh, thanks, Keith. It's always a privilege to be with you. Thank you. Look forward to the next time. Me too. Thank you, Rick.